Hello, my friends, and welcome back to another episode of Snuggles and Storytime. My name is Amanda, and I'm so glad to see you today. Are you ready to get started? I've been waiting for you to come back. Let's get started with saying hello. Put your hands up so you can join us. Here we go. Hello, all my friends, how are you? Hello, all my friends, how are you? With the jiggle, 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 and a wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Hello, all my friends, how are you? I am so excited to see you today. Today, we have two new stories about a new feeling word. It's called panic. Panic is a mix of worry and scared and confused. When you're panicked, you don't make very good choices because your thinking brain isn't working. Panic. That's our emotion we're talking about today. Let's count how many letters are in the word. One, two, three, four, five. Panic. It can be a scary feeling. It's kind of like you're mad and kind of like you're scared, but your thinking brain doesn't work, and that's the big difference. Today, I have two great stories to share with you, and in both stories, somebody is panicked. They're not using their thinking brains, and they kind of freak out a little bit. So what's a little problem has a big reaction, and that doesn't match. They're panicked. My first story, Actually, both of my stories have chickens in them today. Mm -hmm. Both of them have chickens. The first story is called Stuck in the Mud. And it's by Jane Clark. And the illustrations or the pictures are by Gary Parsons. Are you ready for this story? It's a great one. I think you will enjoy it. Stuck in the Mud. Here we go. Early in the morning, down on the farm, a new day was dawning, peaceful and calm. The barn door burst open. Wake up, squawked the hen. I've counted my chicks and one's run off again. Oh, look, that one's missing. Let's count their chicks to find out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, number 10 is missing. Help, help, clucked the chicken. My poor little chick is stuck in the mud and the mud is deep and thick. Uh-oh, he's stuck in the mud. Is that a big problem? Do you need policemen and firemen and all those kind of people to come help? No, it's not a big problem. Is it a little problem that he can solve himself? Hmm. Do you think he can get out by himself? I don't know. I think it might be a medium problem where maybe he needs somebody's help. Let's see if he'll fix the problem. I've pushed and I've pulled again and again, and now I'm stuck too, said the poor muddy hen. Uh-oh. Now there's two animals stuck in the mud. Is it a big problem? Do we need police officers to help? Do we need firefighters to help? Hmm. Not a big problem yet. The cat heard the hen, hold on, wait for me. It's perfectly easy. I'll soon pull you free. The cat pushed and the cat pulled again and again. But soon she was stuck with the poor muddy hen. Uh-oh, now there's three animals stuck in the mud. Now is it a big problem? Nope, 
not yet. Nobody's hurt. They're just stuck. Dog heard the cat. I'll help you, he yapped. Meow, said the cat. So he jumped in the puddle and his paws were trapped. Hmm. So now the dog is stuck too. So there's four animals stuck in the mud. The dog pushed and he pulled again and again. And soon he was stuck with the cat and the hen. Sheep heard the dog and without even thinking, she stepped into the mud and soon she was sinking. She pushed and she pulled again and again, but soon the sheep was stuck with the dog, cat, and hen. Uh-oh, how many people are now? Let's count. One, two, three, four, five. Five animals are stuck in the mud. Horse heard the sheep. Oh, nay, how unlucky. My horseshoes are stinking. My tail might get mucky. Is it going to stop him from helping, you think? Or will he help still, even though he'll get dirty? I don't know. Let's see. Oh, I think he went to help because I see him. The horse pushed and he pulled again and again. And now he was stuck with the sheep, dog, cat, and hen. Uh-oh. Will they ever get out of the mud, you think? What's this? said the farmer. Phew! This mud is smelly. And now mucky mud is all over my belly. He pushed and he pulled again and again. Until the farmer was stuck with all of them. Just like the hen. Oh dear, said the chick. You all seem to be trapped. Oops. Splat went the mud on his little as his little wings flapped. It's time I got out. And with a small plop, the chick jumped out of the mud with a skip and a hop. Was the chick really stuck? No, he was not stuck. You pushed and pulled again and again, but I'm not stuck now. And I wasn't stuck then. Mud is great fun, I'm sure you'll agree. I love mucky mud. Thanks for playing with me. The end. So in the story, the mama hen thought the chick was stuck. But was he? No. And the mama freaked out or, what's our new word? Panicked because she thought the chick was stuck and she couldn't get him out. Yeah, it was a small problem. The chick fixed it all by himself. But the mom freaked out and she called for lots of people to help. But did the chick need the help? No, he could do it all by himself. Nice job. Let's sing a song and then we'll read our other story, okay? Do you remember the happy and you know it song? Okay, let's start with being happy and clap our hands. Here we go. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. <gasps> now you have to be sad. Let's pretend. <laughs> you got your sad face on. Good job. When we're sad, we're going to wipe our eyes. Because sometimes tears fall from them. Are you ready? Here we go. 
forgive yourself. And you know it. Wipe your eyes. <laughs> if you're sad and you do it, wipe your eyes. <laughs> if you're sad and you do it, then you be so sure they show it. If you're sad and you do it, wipe your eyes. <laughs> Are you done being sad? I am too. The next one is if we're angry. Mm. Angry is a really strong feeling. It makes you feel really like you want to just cross your arms and scrunch up your face. It's a strong feeling. When we're angry, we've got to calm our bodies down so we can be a good thinker. And we're going to take a breath. Are you ready? Here we go. If if you're angry and you know it, take a breath. <sighs> if you're angry and you know it, take a breath. <sighs> if you're angry and you know it, then your face will surely show it. Mm. If you're angry and you know it, take a breath. <sighs> Are you done being angry now? Me too. Now we're going to be loved. So we're going to give a big hug to ourselves today. Are you ready? If you're loved and you know it, share a hug. Oh. If you're loved and you know it, Share a hug. Oh, if you're loved and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're loved and you know it, give a hug. Oh, I love love. It's my favorite emotion. What's your favorite emotion that we do? Do you like being happy? Maybe you like pretending to cry. I don't know. Are you ready for our next story? It's about a chicken again who feels panic. When their thinking brain stops working and they get scared and confused and they don't make decisions that make any sense. Our next story is called Chicken Little. And the pictures are by Laura Rader. Now, this is a story that a lot of people know. It's a classic tale. Sometimes people call them fairy tales or folk tales. It means they came from a long, long time ago, but there's a lesson to be learned in them. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna take a look at Chicken Little. Here we go. One day when Chicken Little was scratching in the leaves, an acorn fell out of the tree and hit her on the tail. Oh no, said Chicken Little. The sky is falling. I must run and tell the king. Is the sky falling? It's just an acorn falling. She's panicked. She's not making a good decision. So she went along and went along until she met Henny Penny. Good morning, Chicken Little, said Henny Penny. Where are you going? Oh, Henny Penny, the sky is falling. I'm going to go run and tell the king, said Chicken Little. How do you know the sky is falling, said Henny Penny. I saw it with my own eyes. I heard it with my own ears. And a piece of it fell on my tail, said Chicken Little. Then I will go with you, said Henny Penny. Is the sky falling? They're panicked. They're not making good choices. So they went along and went along until they met Cocky Locky. He's a rooster. Good morning, Henny Penny and Kitty Chicken Little, said Cocky Locky. Where are you going? Oh, Cocky Locky, the sky 
is falling and we're going to go tell the king. How do you know the sky is falling? said Cocky Lucky. I saw it with my own eyes and I heard it with my own ears and a piece of it fell on my tail, said Chicken Little. Then I will go with you, said Cocky Lucky, and we will tell the king. Are they panicking? They're scared of something they don't need to be scared of and their brains aren't thinking very well. So they went along and went along until they met Ducky Lucky. Good morning, Cocky Lucky, Henny Penny, and Chicken Little, Ducky Lucky said. Where are you going? Oh, Ducky Lucky, the sky is falling and we're going to go tell the king, said Chicken Little. How do you know the sky is falling, said Ducky Lucky. Henny Penny told me, said Cocky Lucky. Chicken Little told me, said Henny Penny. And I saw it with my own eyes, and I heard it with my own ears, and a piece of the sky fell on my tail, said Chicken Little. Oh, said Ducky Lucky. Then I will go with you, and we will all tell the king. Is it really falling? They're not using their thinking brain. They're panicked. So they went along and they went along until they met Goosey Lucy. Good morning, doggy loggy, cocky loggy, honey penny, chicken little, said Goosey Lucy. Where are you going? Oh, Goosey Lucy, the sky is falling and we are going to go tell the king, said Chicken Little. How do you know the sky is falling? said Goosey Lucy. Well, Cocky Lucky told me, and Henny Penny told me, and Chicken Little told me, they all said. And I saw it with my own eyes, and I heard it with my own ears, and a piece of it fell on my tail, said Chicken Little. Oh, then I'll go with you, said Goosey Lucy, and we'll tell the king. So they all went along until they finally got to the king's palace. Oh, your majesty, we have something important to tell you. The sky is falling. The sky is falling? How do you know the sky is falling? Said the king. Well, Doggy Luggy told me and Cocky Luggy told me and anybody told me and Chicken Little told me, they all said. And I saw it with my own eyes, and I heard it with my own ears, and a piece of it fell off the tail off the sky and fell on my tail, said Chicken Little. Ooh, take a look at the king's face. Does he look scared? Does he look panicked? No, he looks kind of concerned. He's using his thinking brain, and he's thinking, that doesn't make sense. Hmm. Let's see. The chicken looked at chicken. I'm sorry. The king looked at Chicken Little, then reached into her feathers, and pulled out an acorn. Chicken Little said, "The king, the sky isn't falling. It was an acorn that fell on your tail." The animals all laughed. Chicken Little laughed too, and they all went back home. They weren't using their thinking brains, were they? And that's the end. They were panicked. They were so scared, their brains couldn't make sense of what was happening. They forgot. Sometimes when we're panicked, our brains don't think well. And we have to calm our body down so our brain can make choices again. So today, I'm gonna teach you two ways to calm your body down so your brain can start thinking again, okay? The first one you're gonna need a magic finger for. And what you're gonna do is you're going to make a figure eight. So you're gonna kind of make an S and an S like that. There you go. You can make it just like me. So you're gonna make your figure eight, but now when you're taking a breath, you're gonna go in and you're gonna go out. And you're gonna breathe in and you're gonna breathe out. Are you ready to try it? 
Okay, making the figure eight and breathing will help your brain catch up. Here we go. Put your finger on mine and we'll magically make the number eight together. Breathing in first, ready? In, now out. Now in, now out. If you need a bigger breath, you can breathe in the whole number eight and then breathe out the whole number eight. Let's try it that way. Here we go. Ready? Breathing in. Now breathe out. Let's do it one more time. Breathing in. Now breathe out. Breathing helps your brain slow down so you can use your thinking brain. Nice job. The next one is called a balloon breath. So you're gonna start by making your hands go on your head. And when you breathe in, you're gonna make your balloon get bigger. And then you're gonna make a balloon sound that lets it all out like this. <laughs> Until it crushes back on your head. Are you ready? Breathing in first. <laughs> now breathe out. <laughs> Do it again. Breathing in. Now breathe out. Do one more time with me. Here we go. Breathe in. Now breathe out. When you're panicked, your brain is not thinking well. It's not thinking at all. It's too scared to think. So we need to stop and take a breath so our brain can start thinking again. I'm so glad you joined me today and we learned all about being panicked. It can be scary, but you're tough. You're smart. You're loved. Give yourself a great big hug from me and I will see you next time. Bye-bye, my friends.